All right, Algebra 2, today we're just going to continue our journey into quadratics. We're going to solve some quadratics now by graphing. So yesterday, or last time, we learned how to graph, well, we reviewed, I should say, how to graph four point and 4.1 quadratic functions. Now, we are going to solve them, okay? And I'm going to tell you guys again that the solution to both lines and quadratics and absolutes and everything else, um, if you're just looking at a solo picture on a graph, the solution is going to always happen where we cross the x-axis. Okay, so these two little dots here, those are solutions. All right, that is very, very, very important. That's what we're looking for today. These are also called the zeros. And the reason that they're called zeros is because that's where the y value, where the y value is zero. Okay, so if I plug a zero in for the y value um, in, this, in the equation, that's going to be where the x crosses. Okay, so it's like the x-intercept on a line. We remember that on a line, if we said like y equals uh, 2x plus 4, that if we set y to equal 0, we could solve this, right? So we could say 2x is equal to negative 4, so x is equal to negative 2, and that would be our 0, that would be our root, that would be our solution. Here, we're just doing that with quadratics. So we're trying to see where does the graph cross the x. Now, are there times where it doesn't? Yeah, you're going to get some pictures today that look like this. And for those guys, there's no real solution. There's technically a solution. That's not, not in, the, in the real number system. All right, so we're going to say no real solution whenever we have a graph that looks like this that doesn't cross. And then you might get a graph that looks like this, where it only crosses in one place, or it comes down and touches. Okay, that's going to have one solution. Technically, it's two, but it's two of the same, right? So we just say that it's one, one solution when it just touches. So those are the possibilities for today. So quadratic equations, these are quadratic functions that are set to equal a value. So when, you, when we go to equation mode, we have an equal sign, right? Um, so typically, they're going to be solved for y. So it's going to be like y equals 2x squared plus uh, 3x minus 4 or something like this. Um, if you go to solve this, you want to set that y to equal 0 because that is where the graph crosses the x. So if you said 0 is then equal to that, then we could solve that. Um, and there's a number of ways to do it, but factoring was the, the, the main topic in Algebra 1 when we solved these. Um, but for today, we're not going to solve algebraically necessarily, although you can. We're going to just look at the picture. So we're going to make a picture, and we're going to look to see where does the picture cross the x. So in standard form, again, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where a cannot equal 0, and a, b, and c are integers. Okay, in standard form, they are integers. So if you get a fraction, it's not in standard form, but you can put it in standard form. The roots are the solutions. The zeros are also the solutions. Okay, we talked about that. Um, so just a couple of different names there and a couple of different terms for the same thing. Okay, let's get into it. So the first thing that I know, looking at example one here, is that I know for a fact, if I plug a zero in for x, my y value would be negative 15. Okay, so that's right down here. I guess this graph is just big enough for this. Um, We'll see if it goes below that, actually. I don't know. So the first thing that I would do if I'm solving this and trying to see where this crosses my x is I want to know where symmetry happens. So let's find out where symmetry happens by plugging in a and b. So x would be equal to negative 2 over 2 times 1, which is equal to negative 1. So at negative 1, we have symmetry. Somewhere in here. So I didn't make my graph quite big enough. OK, 
Okay, if I plug a negative 1 in to this equation, I would get negative uh, 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 15 is equal to 0. This is 1 plus, I'm going to say minus there, 1 minus 2 minus 15. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, minus 15 is negative 16. Okay, so again, I wasn't quite big enough on this graph, but it's right in here. We have a vertex. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to know where this approximately crosses x. Okay, so let's just keep cruising to the right of this. And the reason I'm going to choose values to the right of this um, is because I like positive numbers and because I can, t if, as long as I keep track that this is at 1, negative 1 here, uh, whatever happens on the right side of this is going to be reflected on the left, so I don't have to figure that out. Uh, so let's do that. Let's plug in a couple of values. Perhaps we just, since it's going by 3s, perhaps we just go into 3. So let's try 3. 3 squared plus 2 times 3 minus 15 equals 0. This gives me 9 plus 6 minus 15 equals 0, and I believe that comes out to 0. Um, and so 0, we get 0 for this. Actually, you know what? I'm saying 0, but technically this is y. The y value would be 0 when you plug a 3 in. So at 3, we have 0. That's nice. So that's one of our, that's actually one of our solutions, right? One of our solutions, since it crosses nicely right there, is 3. And without doing any work, really, I can say, oh, this distance to here is 4. So if I go 4 in this direction, we would be at negative 5. So I actually know that the solutions to this would be 3 and negative 5. Okay, those would be the two solutions to this one. Um, and what I could do to check that is... I could plug them both back in to make sure that there are they this make this statement true, right? So if I plug a negative, well, I already did that, but I plugged a 3 in and I got 0. If I plug a negative 5 in, I would get uh, 25 minus 10, which is 15 minus 15 is 0, right? So both of these check out. Those are my zeros, and that's what they want us to find today in this lesson. So example 1b. If I got something like this, I'd probably put it in standard form. Uh, so x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals to 0. Okay, I would find out where my symmetry line is. So I would do negative negative 8 over 2 times 1, which is equal to 8 over 2, which is equal to 4. So I have symmetry here at 4. All right, if I plug the 4 back in, 4 squared minus 8 times 4 equals, uh, well, let's not do that. Let's do plus 12 equals what? Let's see. Uh, that'll give me the y value at 4. So this would be 16 minus 32 plus 12 equals y. Uh, 16 minus 32 is uh, negative 16, I believe, plus 12 gives me negative 4. Um, so at 4, I am at negative 4. Okay, there's my vertex, hopefully. This thing is opening up. If I did my math right, that's my vertex. So I know that now I'm going to the right and to the left. This thing will be going up from here. I don't know how wide necessarily, but I kind of have an idea because there's nothing modifying my x squared term. Okay, so let's try another value in here. Let's put in a 6 just to see what happens. That's the next one on my graph to the right. So if I plug a 6 in, I get 6 squared minus 8 times 6. Uh, plus 12. This is 36 minus 6 times 8 is 48 plus 12. This gives me negative 12 plus 12. And look at that. We're at a 0. So at 6, we have a 0. That distance from there to there is 2. So if I go 2 in the other direction, I would be at 2. So that's really all I need. And I also know that my intercept happens at 12, right? So that helps me as well. Uh, so I get something that looks like this. Okay, and the solutions to this again would be 2. And I just found one for sure was 6. You might want to check the 2 to make sure it works. 
Um, so when you're doing your homework, you just want to just make sure, you know, plug that two back in, make sure that that thing uh, is true because you might have made a mistake on this one. All right, so anyway, that's one B. Uh, as I've already said, there's different types of solutions. If it comes down and touches the x-axis, you got one solution. If it crosses in two places, obviously you have two. And then there's times where it doesn't cross at all. That would be no real solution. All right. So example two. Notice they're making this a little more complicated to put this in standard form, but not too bad. We get x squared here. If I move this 8x over, I get plus 8x. And if I move the 11 over, I get plus 16 is equal to 0. Okay. Again, I'm going to start with my axis of symmetry. x equals negative b, which is negative 8, over 2 times 1. So my a here is 1. So this becomes negative 4. So at negative 4, I have symmetry. Okay. So I want to plug that. I want to start by plugging that in. Okay, so keep this, that's what I'm going to go back into, so you know, simplified form there. So negative 4 squared is 16, plus 8 times negative 4, plus 16, equals y. So at 16, plus uh, 8 times negative 4 is negative 32, so maybe I'll just do minus 32 here, plus 16. Looks like it's going to be negative 16 plus 16, which is equal to 0. So notice this. On my axis of symmetry, if I plug my negative 4 back in, I get this. And this thing is going up from here. So this is going to have one solution because my vertex happens on the axis. Okay. Let's choose some nice values to plug in now. If I plug a 0 in, I know that I'll be at 16. So that's like way up here, 10, 12, 14, 16, way up there. All right, and then I can kind of do the same thing on the other side and get the general shape. Okay, so I have one solution, the solution is negative 4. That's example 2. Let's look at another one. So for this guy, let's, uh, let's move everything to the same side here. So on this one we have... Um, negative x squared here. Uh, I'm going to add 12x to both sides, so plus 12x. I'm going to subtract 48 from both sides, so it would be 12 minus 48, which is going to be uh, negative 36. Okay, so for this one, notice that uh, on 2b that we have a, a um, a graph that is going to go upside down. So for this one, let's just figure this one out because we have a negative out front. Um, for this one, let's let's still do negative b over 2a. So it'll be negative 12 over 2 times negative 1, which is what? Negative 12 divided by negative 2 is 6. So at 6, we have symmetry. Okay, if I plug a 6 back in, we have negative 6 squared plus 12 times 6 minus 36. Okay, 6 squared is 36, but it's negative. So we have negative 36 plus 72 minus 36. Okay, if you combine your 36s there, you get negative 72 plus 72, which is equal to 0. So at 6, we're at 0. All right, my intercept here is huge. I'm not going to even plug that in, um, but we could go back and plug like a 4 in and an 8 in to kind of see what happens here, but all we really care about is the fact that um, this is going to go down pretty steep, I believe. All we really care about here is um, the 0, and the 0 in this case is 6, right? It only crosses in one place because the vertex happens on the x, the x axis. Couple more examples here, guys, uh, and then I'll let you guys go on. So here we go. Example three says find two real numbers with a sum of six and a product of negative 55, or show that no such number exists. So for example three, what they're trying to get you to do now is they're trying to get you to think about factoring again. So remember that this question that they're asking here comes back when we're going to factor one of these. 
But let's see if we can find two real numbers with a sum of 6. Product of negative 55. I like to start with the product piece. So what are some numbers that multiply to give us negative 55? So we could say, well, we know a, a nice easy one would be like 5 and 11. Right? 5 times 11 gives me negative 55. I don't know which one would be negative, but if I'm trying to find a sum of 6, I know that I can find a 6 somehow here. If I added 11 and negative 5 together, that would give me 6. And if I multiply negative 5 by 11, that would give me the negative 55. So those are the two answers that they're looking for, actually. Um, but it may not always be that easy. So for some of these, you may not start with the right thing. Uh, this one was easy. But um, you know, with 24, there's a lot of possibilities of different factors of things that multiply to give you 24, like 2 and 12. Right? Like 1 and 24, 3 and 8, 6 and 4. All these combinations are possible, so you have to look at the product uh, of, well, this, is a, this would be the product, but you'd have to look at the sum to see which of these two combinations would work. And you can turn some of them negative, some of them positive, but this just goes back to how we factor. So example 4 says solve by graphing. If exact roots cannot be found, then state the consecutive integers between which the roots are located. So for this, you may not get a nice number where it crosses the x. Okay, but they want you to tell between which two numbers does it cross. So you need to get a pretty good estimation for this. Um, so I know this one has a crossing at negative 10 because that's where my y-intercept is. I'm going to um, find my symmetry. So x is equal to negative negative 1 over 2 times 1, which is 1 over 2. So at 1 half, I have symmetry, which is somewhere in here. I have symmetry. OK, so uh, and I like to I should label that. That's 1 half since this graph it's hard to tell. So that happens at 1 half. If I plug a half back in here, I get 1 fourth minus 1 half minus 10. So a fourth minus a half gives me, uh, if you think about this in terms of like money to help you, if you have 25, a quarter, right, and you subtract 50 cents, if you subtract 50 cents from a quarter, you're at negative one, one not half, but quarter, right? So negative 0 0.25. Um, so this would be negative 1 fourth minus 10. You have negative one fourth minus ten. That's the same thing as negative ten and one fourth. Okay, so at negative or at one half, we're at negative ten and one fourth, which is right here. So this was very close to my y-intercept. So it's going to do something like this. Now let's plug some values in. What happens if we plug a two in? Okay, so if we have two, two squared minus two minus ten is 4 minus 2 minus 10. 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 minus 10 is equal to negative 8. So at 2, we're at negative 8. Okay. Um, and then let's go to 4. So if I plug a 4 in, 4 squared minus 4 minus 10 is 16 minus 4 minus 10, which is 12 minus 10, which is 2. Okay, so at uh, 4, we are up here at 2. Okay, so if I, cro if, I, if I connect these dots, I know that I'm not going to cross right at 4, because at 4 I'm at 2. It doesn't look like I cross at 3 either, but I know it's between 3 and 4. So my, what, the, the, what they want for a solution here, when you're graphing this, is you can say between 3 and 2. 4 is one part of the solution. Then I gotta see what happens on the other side. But I know if this is one of my points and this was at a half, the distance between a half and four is three and a half. So if I go three and a half the other way, we would also have a point here at negative three. Right? So if I do that, then I can see that I also have a crossing between negative 3 and negative 2. So I could say between uh, 
negative 3 and negative 2 is my other one. All right, so you're estimating where it crosses, um, but you got to get the integers correct. So on the test, when you're doing that, get the integers correct. Between which two int whole integers does it cross? So it's somewhere between 3 and 4 and somewhere between negative 3 and negative 2. The last one, guys, uh, sorry for the long lesson. It says, how long would it take a package tossed from a helicopter to reach the ground if the height was modeled by this guy? Um, so we want to know what t is when h is 0, right? So if I set this to equal 0, the height h, h of t is just representing height. We want to know what t is. Okay, so we got this guy going on. Um, so we're going to solve this. So to solve this, how would we solve this? Well, let's find symmetry. If we're going to get a graph of this, let's find symmetry be negative 48 over 2 times negative 16, which is equal to, this will be positive uh, 48 over 32. Okay, so if we reduce that, I know that, um, I believe that 4 goes into both of these. So... 4 goes into 48 um, 12 times, and 4 goes into 32 8 times. So I guess something bigger went in, right? So, uh, oh, because 8 went into both. Um, so if I divide this again by 4, I would get uh, 12 divided by 4 is 3, 8 divided by 4 is 2. So I get 3 over 2, which is 1 and a half. Right, so one, at 1 and a half, I have symmetry. I don't really care what the vertex is, but I want to choose things on either side of one and a half. And think about this: uh, x val the x values here are t. It's values for time. So I don't really care what happens. There's no such thing as negative time. So I want to plug in numbers to the right of one and a half until I get a zero. Okay. So if I do that, if I plug in, let's plug in like a three. So negative 16 times 3 squared plus 48 times 3 plus 400. I'm just kind of guessing the next, you know, I could have plugged in a 2, and maybe I still will have to, but I'm kind of taking a guess. Um, so here, 3 squared is 9. 9 times 16 gives me negative 144. Okay, 48 times 3 gives me positive 144, so that goes away. And then we have plus 400. So at 3, I'm at 400. Okay, so I'm like, I'm still way up here someplace. So let's keep cruising here. What happens, well, let's see what happens at 2, just for fun. Okay, so if I did negative 16 times 2 squared plus 48 times 2 plus 400, okay, I notice that that's going to be a much bigger number, right? Because 2 squared is 4, 4 times 16 is negative 64, but then we're going to add 48 times 2, which is 96, so we're going to have a positive number plus 400. So 2 is not the right direction to go. So what I'm going to do is now is I'm going to go to a bigger time frame. Let's choose 5. So negative 16 times 5 squared plus 48 times 5 plus 400. And let's just see what that gives me. And again, I'm trying to find out where this crosses, right? Where does it cross? Um, so here we go. It's, and it's dropping from a helicopter. So it's coming like it's coming down. Uh, and we just want to see where it crosses. So 5 squared is 25. 25 times 16 gives me um, negative 4, negative 16, negative 400. 48 times 5 gives me uh, 240 plus 400. So notice these cancel. Now I'm at 240 feet after 5 seconds. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit longer than 5 seconds. Let's go to... Um, one second didn't quite get me half of that. So maybe I need to go two seconds. So if I go seven, uh, so we have negative 16 times seven squared plus 48 times seven plus 400. Let's see what the height would be then. 
So after seven seconds, how, where would we be at? So seven squared is 49. 49 times 16 gives me, 49 times 16 gives me 784, negative. 48 times seven gives me plus 336, plus 400. Okay, so we get negative 784 plus 736. Now we're in the negative, right? So 784 minus uh, negative 784 plus 736 gives me, sorry, give me a second, negative 48, right? So um, I don't know why I circle that. Don't circle that. So negative 48, that means that we've the package has now gone 48 feet below the Earth, so it fell into a cave. So we don't want that. Um, and I know that 5 was much too small. And I think that if I plug a 6 in, I'm going to get something that's still above 0. Um, so let's try it. Negative 16 times 6 squared plus 48 times 6 plus 400. If I do that one... Let's see what we get. 36 times 16 negative gives me negative 576 plus 48 times 6, which gives me 288 plus 400. So it's, uh, so it's 576 negative plus 288 plus 400. I'm still at 112 feet there. So it's happening between 6 and 7 seconds. If, without factoring, you want to know exactly where it happens, like if they're looking for a ex more exact answer, you could technically put this into your graphing calculator, or you could put it into Desmos, and you can look for the zeros. Okay, because where it crosses on Desmos, the place where it crosses is going to be the zero. So you'll see that at the, for this particular one, I happen to have the answer in front of me, so it's 6.7. So if you plug that into Desmos, you should see a zero at 6.7. You'll see another zero, but we disregard it because we're talking about time, right? So there's only gonna be one time in which this package hits the ground, and that's 6.7 seconds. All right, guys, that's it for now. We'll catch up with the rest of this in class.